Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So last week, we were talking about how to do a, a simple gin. And we explored the, uh, the specific movements of it. And uh, we we're going to take that a little deeper. We're going to kind of re 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 recreate some of what we did last week, but also take it, take it deeper. And um, we want to, uh, before that, I'd like to talk a little bit about what makes it a gin, because um, the, that's where the alchemy is. So let's, let's say we're, we're doing the movement we did last week. So I'm, I'm doing a very simple thing where I'm just moving my hand and I'm, I'm coming like this or I'm coming like this. Okay, two very simple motions. And as I'm doing them right now, that's a mechanical action. You know, it's, it's, it's strictly a, a muscular movement. You know, if I go like this, it's also one. And as such, it's not very powerful. It doesn't get the job done, doesn't, doesn't provide any magic. There's no alchemy there. But if I make it a gin, we have, this or this and they look very similar because they kind of are the the physical motion is pretty much the same but something happens internally that transforms that from a pretty weak ineffectual arm movement to something which has a lot of internal power. And I'd like to, to talk a little bit about that because that's, uh, it gets down to uh, a topic which goes much, much broader than whether or not you can use it to punch somebody in the face or something. It's a something, it actually relates to how we live our lives, how, how much we are present for the event. And so um, how do we get to, first of all, be able to do it as if it's for the first time? To whenever I, I make this motion, I want to do it as though I've never done it before. And there's, there's a quality to that, that I'm going to get into because it has a broad implications for a lot of other stuff, but it's um, the key to what makes it a gin. So just to go back, a gin is where we direct our energy using consciousness or the mind to direct the energy and express it through the body. And it's contrasted in, in the literature with Li, L-I, which is crude muscular force. And in Taiji Chuan Through the Western Gate, I talked about it and I, I drew it, one chapter was, you know, power versus force was the, uh, was the idea. And that is that drawing a distinction and using two terms which are relatively similar in our language yet they have different connotations. And as such, they, uh, they evoke different feelings for us in, in, in terms of, of what we're doing in Tai Chi. So in the way I'm using it, power, and a lot of people have a kind of a, uh, uh, a reaction against power and force in terms of the words themselves, they bring up bad connotations, but in its simplest meaning, all power means is the quality or ability to do something. That's it. It's just like, are you capable of doing something? The power to go to sleep, the power to eat my breakfast, the power to, to stand up, you know. So all these things regard, you know, the having the quality or ability to be able to actually make something happen. 
force has an implication of being a bit more mechanical, using muscular strength to get something done. So it's, um, uh, but it doesn't have to be muscular strength. You know, force can be a, come in a lot of different ways. But we're still talking about the effect of energy on stuff, and they're they're similar, but they're kind of like the insubstantial and substantial aspects of the same thing. So in the sense that I used it in Western Gate, it was that the power is more related to internal power or the potential to do things. And force is the effect of using crude muscular uh, strength to make something happen. And so we have that, you know, the, the more um, uh, classic way of describing it is Jin, J-I-N versus Li, L-I. The internal power versus the uh, external force. And for a long time, many years, you know, I would read this stuff trying to, you know, get, get beyond the, the simplest uh, parts of my Taiji practice and, and, and studies. And, and there's no one around who actually could explain or even demonstrate what a jinn was. And that was until I actually um, encountered uh, uh, Wayson Liao in, in, in Chicago. And, uh, and he had written a book called um, uh, Taiji Tran Classics. And, and he talked about different kinds of jinns in it. And I said, oh, great. That's Talked to this guy, went there, and he actually gave me a demonstration. I wrote about that in Western Gate uh, also, and uh, how with a very light touch, he was able to create a huge effect. And I said, okay, all right, so I, I have a marker here. I've got something that I can say, yes, this is definitely not physical muscular force that, that, that just happened here. This is, this is something that's really extraordinary. So um, that caused me to, to start researching and try to be able to define it in terms that would be more recognizable to the Western mind. And one that didn't require, you know, 50 years of study and, and whatnot to uh, be able to get to. Because you can go to a Taiji class and just follow your teacher and do your form and, dot, dot, dot. and you can do that for decades and never actually in be able to get have a clue about what Jin is, and very likely they're not even going to talk about it. So, uh, uh, but if it is something that is important, as it is, as I consider it to be, because it is really the essence of what makes Taiji Tran tick, then I need to break that down and see exactly how to put it together and how to be able to make even a simple motion, like in, in this case, like being able to do that and make turn that simple arm movement into a jin. And so what are the components that um, we need to make that happen? So we need energy, okay? What is energy? Energy or chi is defined by its relationship. In other words, how, how stuff reacts against other stuff or how stuff is related to other stuff. So we talked about, let's say the energy is electricity. Okay, how, does, how do we know that there's electricity in my toaster? Well, I put a piece of bread in there, I push down the handle and after a couple of minutes, it comes out browner than it went in. So I know that something happened there and it's plugged into the walls, into the socket. So I say, okay, electricity did it. It did something there, which I, you know, we can explain, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, going deeper into it, but it still is the effect of the energy. We notice the energy by its effect on stuff. It defines the relationship to stuff. So, we get we need energy to make uh, to make the gin. We need it directed by consciousness or awareness. We need to be able to to so it's not just energy, something that just happens. You know, there are 
people who say, no, no, you just kind of get into the, you know, into the Taiji posture and God does it for you or nature does it or something. It's like, no, no, you do it. If you don't do it, it ain't happening. And so it requires that, that intention to actually make something happen. It requires the ability to hold things, hold poles in opposition, hold stuff to be able to say, this stuff is not that stuff and the two relating together, that's, that's the chi between them. So we get that, but we need to direct it through the body to actually make it work. And so one of the things I wanted to do with the, the exploration of Jin was to break it down so that we could take anything and make it into a jinn. Because the way it's classically taught is you have these specific movements, you have your ward off, which gives you the pong jin. Well, pong jin can be found in any movement. Pong jin is an expanding up and out kind of yang energy. You can and should be able to find that in any posture in any movement. And if we think about it as, oh, if I copy these movements, then I will get the magic. No, you're not going to get the magic. It's what what is inside it. And that takes us to the real alchemy, 